The following is a presentation of Two Sports, the leader in local sports coverage. Welcome to Murray Goodman Stadium on the beautiful campus of Lehigh University here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. The host site tonight for the matchup between the Bethlehem Blue Jays welcoming the Martins Creek Creekers, the 2006 current champions, trying to have a big battle tonight. Mike Krause alongside the wizard Jim Wills. Jim, it's a beautiful July afternoon. The sun's cooking down, and these guys are ready to play some pretty good baseball. Oh, they will be able to play some baseball. They've been really, you know, blessed with a great day here. We should have a great ball game here this evening. You know, one team trying to keep their position in that playoff race, the other team trying to get a spot in that playoff race. So we should be in it for a great ball game here this evening. One team in a position currently, Martin Creek, the defending champs in 2006, third place in the league right now at 14-8. Coach Eric Schmidt is trying to hold that playoff spot, and he's going to be uh, trying to do it with his bats and his defense. Yeah, he's been doing a good job of uh, getting a lot of contact hits, which is a good thing, and, you know, getting them at the right time. So that's a position they're in right now in third place. That's where they want to be. Obviously, defending champs, they got a lot of guys coming back from last year to know what that feeling is to get the championship. So they want to make sure they're in the playoff hunt, and third place right now looks pretty good. Bethlehem, the champions in 2002 and 2003, Currently at 11 and 13 in fifth place, trying to catch up. The, the Bethlehem Cardinals currently at 14 and nine. They're going to try to do it with some good defense and some pitching on the mound and the same type of ball game. Yeah, the same type of situation. They need to get some, you know, hits at uh, clutch times. They've been struggling sometimes to get those hits, but you know, tonight's going to be a different story. Going to be a couple good games from this week coming up. So that's the thing they want to make a move right now. These teams have faced each other three times so far in the season. The first two went in the favor of Martins Creek, but Bethlehem has the memory. They won it the last time here at Murray Good Stadium. Can they repeat it? We'll find out when we return here on Two Sports. Out of control, you ain't in control. You came to the wrong place. Call Service Electric today to order Cinemax on digital cable. For a game winning triple play, order Service Electric Cable TV's Value Pick Package. For just $89.95 per month, you'll get full basic cable, 90 channels, including 20 exclusive channels, only on Service Electric. Service Electric Telephone, which includes call waiting, caller ID, and three-way calling, and economy high-speed internet. Bundle up all these great services for one low price. Call Service Electric now for this incredible offer. The sooner you call, the more you save. Overall record, Martins Creek comes at 14-8. Bethlehem Blue Jays trying to get closer to 500 mark and still inching their way back to playoff contention. We're going to start off with uh, Martins Creek as the guest. As we mentioned in the opener, that last game played here, Bethlehem did come out successful. Out in that mound for Bethlehem will be C.J. Saveri. C.J. is 2-3 and three in a year in seven games. He's got 33 Ks and nine bases on balls. Completed three games. And this Blue Mountain League matchup. I switched it. There's our first pitch of the night, and that's going to be a ball. Behind the plate today is a legendary man himself of this league, Dave Hammerley. And on the bases, Barry Leonard. And a unique setup here, Jim, as uh, you can see the sun bathing down on the field. The first base will be the Creekers looking directly in the sun from the dugout as the uh, Blue Jays is getting that shade. 
Uh, it's a beautiful night here for baseball, though. That's the thing that uh, talking to a few of the people on the uh, Bethlehem team, they got rained out twice last year when they tried to get themselves on a little bit of TV coverage. So they're a happy bunch of campers here this evening because it is no doubt a beautiful evening here, almost 90 degrees this afternoon. So it's probably settling in around 86 right now as that sun is coming right at us, as you said. At the plate, Jim Borton with a count of three and one. Jim uh, has an average on the season of 184, but he draws a free pass on first on the five pitch pass. It's going to bring up to the plate Joe Bubba. We're checking in at 370 as we see the defense set up here for Bethlehem. Brown behind the plate, Severi's on the mound. D'Amico at third, Dickey at short, Rogers at second base, Ray at first. You got Brown, you got Harrickle in the center field slot, and Konopelski checking out the rest of the outfield. Joe Bubba to the plate with the runner on first. And that first called strike takes a look at it. Bubba Over on first base is Jim Borden. Bubba checking in with three doubles on the season, 20 hits overall. Has scored 12 runs this year. Here's our stat man, the wizard, Jimmy. Stats provided by Mr. Tim Fisher, the statistician for the Blue Mountain League. Does an outstanding job, as we all know, a member of the Blue Mountain League Hall of Fame. Played a long, a long time, over 20-some years. Only surpassed by a few people, the legendary Bob Zierfoss being one of them. Good contact to right field with a bearing on, with the attempt on a double play. Not in time, so the fly out to right field off the bat of Joe Bubba. Gets the Jim Borton back on base on a close throw from right fielder Ron Konopelski. Now in the batting order, you got Jim Borton leading off, Joe Bubba playing second, batting number two coming up to play now. Jez Borden, we'll talk about him shortly, the DH, Omar Torres, clean up. Brandon Ardell is center fielder batting fifth, Eric Schmidt, the catcher sixth, Jim Happel, the left fielder in seventh, Kevin Walbert, the first baseman eight, and clean up Matt Monty, the young man that will be playing in right field. I just made that catch in the attempted double play. Jesse Borden, uh, one of the long ball hitters in the league. His numbers, if I have them correctly, Jim, and can hit the ball out of the park. Yes, checking in at 323. Has three home runs on the season, six doubles, 20 hits. I correct that that was Ron Konopelski. I'm sorry to twist that, giving Matt Monty credit when he's in the dugout. That was Ron Konopelski with the attempted double play to first. Sweeping to his left was Josh Rogers on the assist to retire and number three batter Jess Borden on a four to three. But advancing over to second base, Jim Borden. It's gonna bring up Omar Torres, who's checking in at 379 on the season. Torres, the third baseman, with a runner in scoring position with two down. Torres with five doubles, 25 hits on the season, has scored 11 runs for the Creekers. Lefty on the mound, takes a look back. Second, hangs it out there. This could be a scoring situation. The single and coming home standing up is Jim Borden to get the first run across the plate here in the top of the first off the RBI, RBI single of Omar Torres. Nice piece of hitting right there by Omar Torres. Just got up there, jumped on that first pitch, put it in the gap out there between center and left. There you see it. He waits on it just a little bit. Nice job with the wrist coming through with the hands. Gets that ball into the outfield. Center fielder Brandon Ardella comes up in the fifth spot. He's on the left side of plate, so we got a lefty batting against a lefty thrower. Ardella checking in at 227 on the season. See the leaves are quiet. Not a whole lot of wind out here to aid or inhibit the ball and its travels across the outfield. People were kind of uh, worried about this evening. There was a threat of th thunder showers, but I think that's going to become a lot later, as you can see with the sky here. Great view here from this Lehigh campus facility. Not a lot of clouds around. Jim, 
you mentioned that word, and the last time I mentioned that word, boy, did uh, <laughs> we have uh, Doug Heater and I had quite a day waiting that's, there. That's right. <laughs> that's true. I forgot about that. But one. that was that was softball. We're in uh, baseball now, so I think it, it's got the waiver. Opposite field. Falls in fair. There's going to be extra bases. Coming to third is Torres, and they're keeping him there. And coming in for the double, Brand Nardella, opposite field double. Pretty good contact off the bat of the Creekers. The Creekers have come out here with their bats flailing here early. You saw that one. That was a good one. It went down the third base line, curved a little bit. They thought it might have been foul. The Amico down at third base thought it was going to be foul, but ends it up hitting on the line and then bouncing into foul territory. So you're going to take a look at it here. You see how he's going the opposite field. Now you're going to take a look. Just hits on the inside of that line. Great job by the camera crew there to get you that shot. It's going to bring up the catcher and uh, manager of the team, Eric Schmidt. Now is Eric the manager. He's the oldest member of this squad. The uh, returning champions. Eric checking in at triple threes. 333 on the season. That's a little better than a triple twos, isn't it, Jim? <laughs> Especially yeah. on a busy afternoon. And, and threes are wild. He's got three doubles, 20 hits. Takes a look at that. 2-0 oh, the count to uh, the manager, Schmidt. Also will be behind the plate. You know, those catches when they're batting have that trained eye. They can read those seams a little bit earlier after a lot of experience reading those throws out of the arm. That comes in low for a 3-0 oh count. So Harry does not want to give the free pass to load the bases. Jim Happel, the left fielder on deck. The beautiful field straight away, 400, 320 on the left and right field line. You don't see any spectators basking in the sun. I see one behind the dug behind the plate. <laughs> it's an interesting concept. Every bit of shade is taken by the spectators here already this evening. Eric Schmidt tried to do the walk the first to try to convince umpire Dave Hammerley, and Dave's going to have none of that. Let's take another look at that pitch. Just caught that outside corner. Three and one count. Eric Schmidt, now he's yet to take a cut and a full count here. So with two down here and a full count. That's all right, takes a look. Opposite field. That ball falls fair. That's going to send in across the plate. Torres, Nardella falling. And Eric Schmidt with a stand-up double. So back-to-back -back doubles here has produced some production for the Creekers. Nice job of hitting here. They came out with the bat swinging here early. That's the third ball that was hit to the right side of the field. You Off take a look bat. at that. Be getting some nice loft on that ball and getting out there. See that just hits on inside again. We have a courtesy runner at second base for the coach, Eric Schmidt. Happel, the left fielder, coming to play with a 3-0 lead and a runner on second. Severi throws that first pitch strike. Go, Hat. Happel checking in at 2-1-6. That's going to come foul. So with uh, runner on second, Happel is trying to save alive. I believe that's Rafi Rivera, the pinch runner out at second. The bender kept in front of him. This catch is Zach Brown. Nice job by Brown back there. 
a tough position you want to be in this evening, having that catcher's gear on you. Oh, the way the sun is beating down. That's a good way to describe it, Jim. We're looking right at it and it's sending those rays down here hot and heavy. Kate Amon is back there at second. A little bit wide. Makes count deuces. This is uh, batter number seven to the plate here in the top of the first inning with the Martin Creekers. Three runs across the plate. The off speed bender. Happer gets in front, can't make good contact, keeps count at twos. Kevin Walbert on deck. I'll tell you, this grass looks uh, very well manicured, Jim. This stadium, the field looks in great shape. Outstanding job done by the Lehigh Facilities Group. Outstanding baseball park, you know, for people who haven't been out here from the Lehigh Valley. It's just gorgeous, gorgeous setting here for baseball. And he gets Apple on the swing strikeout, so that's going to end the top of the first with three runs across the plate for the Creekers. We have one base on balls and three consecutive hits with a runner left on base. It's now the Bethlehem Blue Jays, after that start, try to come back with an answer. Jim? Well, they're going to need to get those bats rolling. I mean, they've seen what happened here already. They've jumped on Severi early. They really have done a good job. Martin's Creek is going to have Jim Happel playing left field, Brandon Nardello in center, Matt Monty in right. At first, Kevin Walbert. At second, Joe Buba coming up short will be Jim Barton in the hot corner, Omar Torres behind the plate, Eric Schmidt, and on the mound for his third star of the year, Ryan Driscoll with a record of 1-0. and oh. He's got nine Ks and one base on ball. Ryan of uh, Central Catholic High School. Uh, Ryan's father, Dan, a good man. Dan, the man, Driscoll. Blue Jays are going to send up to the plate Nick D'Amico, the manager, first. Mike Dickey, second. Batting in the third spot, Dan Borden. We'll clean up, Tim Ray. Zach Brown, the catcher, batting fifth. Josh Rogers at second, batting sixth. Sean Brown, no relation to Zach. Seventh, the left fielder. Ron Konopelski, the right fielder, batting eighth. And Josh Harrickel, the center fielder, in a cleanup spot. Josh is there, and he almost acts as if he's a leadoff hitter. Harrickel, a very good contact hitter in the ninth spot. We're going to take a look at... Uh Creekers on a on a roll there first in the first inning, so they got a lot of confidence now to send out their pitcher Ryan Driscoll. He's got a lot of you know confidence. They hit the ball well. They did a couple of good things, a couple of doubles there, so he should have a lot of confidence under his belt to start this ball game. Nothing better than have your manager come up to the plate to see if he can get things started after getting three across the plate. That'll be in the hands of Nick D'Amico. Jim, can you see that scoreboard out there in left field? Can you read those numbers? <laughs> no, there are no numbers out oh, there. Oh, that's right. right. School's out of session. Let's see if we can. <laughs> out School's out. We don't. Out. We don't do any of those things here. Oh, that's why I saw uh, intramural club sports director Jane Josephson relaxing a little bit, waiting for those uh, incoming freshmen soon to be on campus at Lehigh University. Something else coming on campus over here there, Jim, shortly, isn't it? Uh, I just saw the trailer when I was pulling in there, the equipment trailer with all the weight equipment here. Going to be ready for the Eagles here. You, uh, in between innings, Jim, going to jog over there and test out that weight <laughs> equipment. There's a great look. What a beautiful angle. And behind those cars, the uh, tennis complex. You see a beautiful angle as you look in the pan to the left side, you see that use of those beautiful leaves on those maples. Gorgeous, gorgeous setting here. So as I said, it's for people who haven't been out here. It's a very, very nice park. Okay, now we got the manager behind the plate and Eric Schmidt for the Creekers. And up to bat, manager Nick D'Amico trying to get something started for the Bethlehem Blue Jays. And the Blue Jays did win the title, Jim, back in 02 and 03. Creekers' last title was in 1996 since winning it last year. And uh, Bethlehem trying to, again, fight for that playoff position. Down two and below 500. Good contact, the stab by Jim Barton at short. Throw over to Kevin Walbert for the finish. Well, D'Amico makes some good contact there, but out at first, uh, Nick had a great season this year, Freedom, first year 
coaching for the Freedom Patriots here. You're going to see the good cut he got at it. Great job, as you said, down at short by Borton to get that ball over the first. Back to D'Amico. Very good job with Freedom. Got him in the playoffs first year behind the Patriots baseball program. Did a very, very good job. The kids liked him. They were, you know, they did a very nice job during the season. You know, a lot of times Jim uh, gets lost in the management as far as your relationship with kids. you got to manage kids and understand what kids go through. And they're committed to athletics, but there's a lot more going on in their lives with their family, their academics, and, of course, that special someone that they always have. Yes, that's part of the triangle. You always have that to go with you as well. But uh, Mr. D'Amico did a very, very good job with that Freedom program this year. Mike Dickey, the shortstop in the second position with a count one and one. First pitch off the end of his bat. Dribbled it foul. Dickey Challenge jumping in here at, excuse me, Mike, at 250 on the season. There's a little interesting hop there. It almost took that 45-degree uh, turn as it took that second bounce off the bat of Dickey for that foul ball and the count going to one and two. Omar Torres uh, smartly played it as soon as it kicked foul, get in there and touch it. The very vocal umpire behind the plate, Dave Hammerly, making sure everybody knows the count. It's very helpful when you don't have an electronic scoreboard in operation with these kids at home. making the count even at twos. Trying to throw that high heater and see if Dickey would uh, take the shot at it. Bender falls low to make the count full. We talked about Driscoll on the mound. 11 innings pitched on the season. He's given up six runs, 11 hits, one walk. Hit one batsman and has struck out nine. He's 1-0 and on the season. There's a long ball to left, chasing it down. Jim Happel. Happel. So the long fly out to left field off the bat of Mike Dickey. Retires the second one here in the bottom of the first inning of Blue Mountain Baseball. It'll send up to the plate uh, designated hitter Dan Borden. Borden having a very good year. 4-4-1 four, four, on the season. He's really been making some contact with that baseball. Good man to have in the slot. 15 hits, three doubles, four home runs. He's even picked up 16 base on balls this year, so you know he's been a tough out to get up at the plate. Pitchers had a struggle with him all year long. So Borden, also his brother, what's interesting, Jim, his brother, Jesse, is a member of the Creekers. And I believe, if I have my numbers correct, they are tied for the league in long balls with four each. So a little uh, family get-togethers. I'm sure there's some bragging rights going on, but you can't do any bragging when you're tied. And they ain't going to see if he can uh, get the edge here. Playing pretty deep in all three outfield positions. I saw fundamental footwork over there at second by the defense of Joe Bubba for the assist. And that's going to retire the side with Dan Borden on the 4-3 to three out. And 1-2-3 inning for Ryan Driscoll. We played one. The Creekers push three o'clock. Bethlehem, zero. Can't make it to the game? Service Electric Cable TV has your front row seat for select games this season. America's favorite pastime can be seen exclusively in the Lehigh Valley on Service Electric 2 Sports. Visit TV2Sports.com and click on the Reading Phillies logo for a schedule of games. Watch the Art Phils take on the Trenton Thunder Friday, July 27th and Saturday, July 28th at 7 p.m. Reading Phillies baseball, how do you fan? 
With cable TV, service and installation are guaranteed. With satellite TV, who knows? Service and installation become your responsibility. Even so-called free installation may require an annual contract. And if there's a problem, then what? Who do you call? With cable TV, service and installation are guaranteed by people you can depend on. People right here in your community. You might want to think about that. an overview of the beautiful mountain here in South Mountain on the campus of Lehigh University in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, the host site of uh, Martins Creek Bethlehem Blue Mountain Baseball matchup. Martins Creek started off the top of the first, pushing three runs across on three hits. Bethlehem tried to answer, made solid contact, but the defense of Martins Creek held out. Mike Krause alongside the wizard Jim Wills here in the south side of Bethlehem. Beautiful ballpark here in Murray Goodman Stadium baseball field. And I'll tell you, Jim, the athletic facilities at Lehigh have really been upgraded and beautiful. Up to the plate now in the eighth spot is Kevin Walbert. Kevin's the first baseman. Well, we should mention while we're here, Lehigh, you know, regular season champions a couple of years in the Patriot League, 2002, 2006. As you see those big boards out there, NCAA tournament 2006. So, uh... Okay tournament champion 2006 as well so a successful program here at Lehigh University so he gets the off speed to come right back at the mound horn for the retirement of batter number one much better start here in the second inning off the end of the bat of Kevin Walbert as uh, put out for Tim Ray his second of the game now to plate, Matt Monty. Matt is uh, one of the youngest guys in his squad. Matt also plays Legion ball. They really like the, the way he handles himself in right field and at the bat. First pitch from Savari is a little bit high. Well, it's interesting with a lot of guys, you know, they try to get some more experience playing in two leagues. That's, you know, that's a tough thing to do schedule-wise. When you're younger, it's a lot easier. You get some great experience going in both leagues. And you, you know if you're, you're playing against these older, with these older guys, you've got to be able to handle your own. and You've got to respect your teammates when you know, you've got guys that are in their late 20s, early 30s out on the field with you. You've got to behave a little differently than you're coming out of the locker room down the hallway chasing somebody with their books. That, or in the case of uh, Hellertown, Bob Zierfoss in his 60s <laughs> chasing you around. Surf will appreciate me saying that. Yep. Game hasn't changed, though. Nope. And Zerf hasn't changed either. Still very competitive. Think about being competitive this time of your career. Monty's still making contact, staying in there. And being 60-some you know, years old and being able to play a little bit sometimes, you know. You need the cylinder to hit the sphere. One of the most difficult things in athletics. Round object hitting round object. And that round object is going foul for the third consecutive foul tip off the bat of Matt Monty. Still believe the count's at one and two. See if they try to throw anything to bait the young right fielder. To short, they're challenging his speed to throw. In the dirt, unable to scoop it up over at first is Tim Ray. So Monty reaches base. Oh, On the throwing error. In the dirt, unable to scoop it. That's going to bring the top of the order. Now Jim Borton with Monty showing his speed there to see if they're going to be aggressive on the base path. Going against the lefty Severi on the mound in the stretch. So very struggled a little bit in that first inning with the hitting, and now all of a sudden he starts off this inning and they get a bad break there right from the get-go. So the third gets past catching glove of Zach Brown and Monty now in scoring position. Borden's first time up, he drew a walk, scored. On the RBI off Omar Torres and a shot to left field. One down here in the top of the second. Oh, 
That's going to be fouled back by the truck. See if we get any extra sound. We do not. It's just a th plop in the grass. One thing that we've noticed about Martin Creek is they're keeping the ball alive. The soft hands of umpire Dave Hamry. Look at that. He's still got it. I don't know if he would have been that good with a glove on his left hand or not. Rookie of the year, two-time MVP, Shippensburg University. What else? Now umpire. <laughs> good look at Dave. Great job behind the plate. It's great that these guys still keep umpiring games. It's a nice big curveball there by Severi. But it's great to see these guys still involved. You know, I know it's not uh, the opportune thing to do. At that, at that point, you know, and it's not anything glorified, believe me. You know, there's, you're not playing and going before 10,000 no. fans here. Well, you have a passion, <laughs> and you just continue to pursue that passion. <laughs> Called strike in the third, uh, looking off Borton. That's going to change the situation now for the Blue Jays with two outs and a runner on second. Joe Bubba coming up to the plate. Joe hit the long fly ball to right field, his first at bat. Second strikeout for Severi here on the afternoon, or excuse me, on the evening. Well, Jim, we're starting to get a little cloud cover to cool it down a little bit. So we don't know if we keep getting that sound, might end up with those raccoon eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, Severi likes that bender. First pitch is a ball to Joe Bubba, the second baseman. Really gets low in that batter stance. He's going to help with that time as he gets the ball. They count 2-0. and oh. Severe, your rookie. Graduate of Becca and going to East Stroudsburg University. The U, Jim. The U. The U. That's where we, <laughs> the two U graduates sitting here right now. When it wasn't the U. It was the C. It was the SC. SC, exactly. That one catches the corner, make the count two and one. You get a look at the second uh, umpire working the bases, Barry Leonard. Nice center field shot from our camera crews. Tell you, Jim, the one thing that two sports does, you get all the angles. You will not miss any of the action, guaranteed. Thank you for joining us here in this beautiful Tuesday evening, no, two sports. Boy, boy. Full three and one now to uh, Joe oh, Bubba. It's a very keeping an eye on mine. He doesn't want to give too much in case there is contact. Bubba did hit the ball out of the infield on his first at bat. Although right now there's two retired. Same spot, chasing that down. Konopelski, and he makes the put out for his second put out of the game and is going to retire the Creekers with four runners or four batters at a plate, no damage, reach base on the error, and then retired the last two. So we've uh, going to take it a little break here with the action at Martins Creek, Bethlehem Blue Jays with Martin Creek up 3-0. Out. Wow. This is unique. You must know I designed you with all of my heart. Ah! The best shows are now on Showtime and Showtime HD. Do you have a high def TV set? then you need an HD converter to receive all the best in high-def programming. Service Electric offers the largest selection of high-definition channels in the Lehigh Valley. 26 in all. Rent an HD converter for just $9.95 per month and receive 13 high-def channels for free. Or upgrade your HD package to $17.95 per month and receive 26 high-def channels. You need to call Service Electric Cable TV to get the most out of your HD set.
get a good look at the red circled R for Rawlings and got that leather. The sound of leather means it's time for baseball. And we're past midseason form in the Blue Mountain League. Mike Krause alongside the wizard Jim Wills. Martins Creek with a 3-0 advantage. Martins Creek currently in third in the league, trying to maintain that third spot. While the Bethlehem Blue Jays in fifth, Martins Creek right now trails Hellertown Royals. The Royals are 20-2, and two, Jim, and having a heck of a season. Oh, they've had a tremendous start. Lost their first game of the year, Mike, and then came back and just ripped through the league, and they just lost. Uh, I think it was last week was the first time they lost again. So... They went a long, long time. I thought it was five to six weeks without a loss. So That's a heck of a season. I have some uh, information that we'll talk about the league shortly. But up to the plate, number 17, Tim Ray, the first baseman. Tim uh, had some trouble scooping that throw from shortstop to get that runner on base. Now he's going to try to make up for that by getting himself a little trip around the bag, see if he can get bag one and go advance from there from the left side of the plate. As Driscoll throws that one into the dirt. See, uh, umpire Dave Hamley still has that form. <laughs> that lefty. He's got that lefty arm. Very accurate to the glove, back to the plate. Good look at the first baseman, Tim Ray. We're in the number one seven. That's a great number if you're a basketball fan from years back, right, Jim? The one and only Johnny Havlicek. You know, he used to say that uh, he would not <clears throat> eat before he'd play. And his reasoning was... If he was hungry, he was nastier. <laughs> <laughs> so he would never eat, so he'd be as nasty as he could when he was playing. Might want to be telling that to some of those NBA general managers this, this Don't time feed around. Him. <laughs> Don't feed them. <laughs> They're going on their own plane and uh, feeding them before and after the game, I'm sure. Yep, just like our college life. <laughs> Tim Ray trying to hold up. Throws the heat. Nice contact. Drive to center field. Back there to make the play for the Creekers as well as Brandon Nardella on a long fly out off the bat of Tim Ray. That's Nardella's first put out of the game. It's going to bring up Zach Brown checking in at 346 on the season. Good thing for Bethlehem is uh, two of their four bats have been out of the infield. And they just try to see if they can get something to fall in the gap as Zach Brown, the catcher, will attempt to do. Brown is tied for the lead in triples with Harrakel on the season. We each have one apiece, six doubles, 18 hits. As we said, 346. Got to look at uh, the work up of the mound for Driscoll. And you got to get the dirt right so your feet are comfortable off the rubber. Big slow curveball yeah. there. Dropped right off the table that time. I we'll see Zach Brand saw it coming. One of the things is recognition, the eyes of the hitter, being able to read the seams of the ball as quickly as possible to dictate the path the ball will take. That one really bent too, but the discipline of Zach Brown. Let's count three and one. It's one down here in the bottom of the second. Blue Jays the home team. Looks like it was a late decision on that swing, Jim. It looked good. He was waiting for the bender. knew it was fast and took a poke at it. Yeah, he tried to think he could get himself in there a little bit too late, though. You take another look at it. You're going to see how it's by him, and he just decides he's really going to take a chop at it. Now we'll see what happens in this count. Gets ahead of it. Foul. Time foul down the third base line. Coach Bill Bozak down there at third base, veteran of this Blue Mountain League. Still got the feet, though, Jim. See how quick he got out of the path yeah, of that ball? Does an outstanding job with that third base coaching. That was the heat, and that's going to be fouled off behind the first base side. Just missed the truck. They're aiming, Jim. We got our traveling trucks, are. Storage trucks, production trucks. There's a good look at the truck that was just missed. So got the white and it's bump free. They're out there waiting to see what happens. Ballon up there, Zach Brown. Bender makes the count full. And 
see how they're going to stay alive. One thing about these uh, Blue Mountain players, Jim, is fastballs are tough. They're contact hitters. Nice way he stayed with the ball as he hits the one bouncer to the left fielder, Jim Happel. And that's going to put the stubborn Zach Brown with his foul balls keeping it alive on first base. More importantly, it's the first hit of the game for the Blue Jays. I'm going to take another look at it here. That ball tails down a little bit, but he gets underneath, pokes it into the outfield for the single. We saw the 320 line. As you get a good look at Zach Brown at first, sending up the second baseman, Josh Rogers. Down three. I'm just going to try to make sure you get aggressive here, Jim. You, you want to try to get at least something across the board. I just think that they're, you know, they're looking for some contact here any which way they can right now. As we look at Rogers stepping in there at 339 on the season, he's done a good job. He's got 19 hits, so he got a good contact hitter up there. He's got two doubles as well, so. It's good coming out of the sixth position. Now you got the ball that's bending so much of the arm of Driscoll. This is, puts a little pressure on the manager, Eric Schmidt, behind the plate. Some of these balls in the dirt, making sure you block and keep it out in front of you. One of the things you're seeing, Jim, it's uh, almost like a Snoopy's uh, cartoon with all the dust coming out from everybody's feet because it's so dry. That's in the outfield and the gap between left or center and right. Called ball. So that's going to be a long fly ball to center off the bat of Josh Rogers. And Zach Brown slides down the base path but returns. And then they'll send in a courtesy runner for Zach with two outs. So coming in for the Blue Jays to run the bases is courtesy runner. I have that roster, number 13, but my roster has him as C.J. Savari, which I know is not him. Right field, it might fall in, chasing it down over the back. Can I get it? Just foul off the call of Dave Hammerley. Great effort. Great job by Walbert down there, chasing that ball down. That's a major league effort down there. Got to give him a lot of credit. Kevin Walbert did a great job. He got a nice jump on it. And then you're going to see that he's just going to miss it by about half a step. One more step, and I think he would have had that one. That sort of clarifies all the efforts and why these guys are fighting themselves in that position of third place and former champions, effort like that defensively. So the long fly, foul ball still at the plate is Sean Brown, the left fielder. With two outs here. Keeping the runner at first and staying alive. don't have a number for that runner. I apologize. Driscoll from the stretch. Dead ball off the foot of Sean Brown. Brown a little late on that swing as well, getting around on that one. Sean Brown played in 11 games so far this season, but up to bat 28 times. Had a lot of success at the plate there, was he? He's uh, seven hits, two doubles, and one four-bagger to his credit. Four-bagger, for those of you that are not athletically adept to the terminology, that means around the bases. Some people call them home runs. Now, would that be a walk-off, Jim? <laughs> do you have that data? I do not have that. Okay. Keep them done. Now, you see... Jim, look at that. that that's like uh, that uh, cartoon character. We're not going to say his name. It's, you know, it brings it down a little bit, but everybody that knows Snoopy and Charlie Brown, look at all that dust all over the place. 
And one of the things it does, though, Jim, it could cause the ball to skid because of that dust. Might not get a true hop. There you got him. There you got him leaning too far that time. You're going to see that lean catches you, boy. Nice pick off. Nice move, the setup. And you do, they went casual, Jim, then they went for the push. And we play two with the score still uh, scoreless second inning, keeping the score with Martins Creek up by three. Thank you. With your help, Pinebrook Services for Children and Youth has made life better for more than 10,000 children since 1979. Join the growing list of guests, advertisers, and sponsors at Pinebrook's 28th Anniversary Luncheon, November 8th at Best Western Lehigh Valley Hotel and Conference Center. For reservations and information, call Pinebrook's Development Department at 610-432-3919. Additional outlets are the best way to enjoy the programs you want to watch. In any room in the house. With cable TV, additional outlets have never been a problem. With satellite TV, if you need to buy a separate receiver for every television in the house, that could get pretty expensive. But with cable TV, additional outlets don't cost much at all. You might want to think about that. Goodman Stadium on the campus of Lehigh University. You see the score 3-0. Those three runs were pushed off in the top of the first inning. We haven't had anything since. In the Blue Mountain League, we're seeing the positioning. You see Hellertown Royals having a great season so far with only two on the uh, lost side. Stars Pub Orioles in second. Martins Creek trying to stay in that third spot, getting the playoff contention. The Cardinals of Bethlehem 14-9. You see the Blue Jays who are here now trying to get a, at least an advantage on the Giants. They take four in the semifinals of the playoffs. Rounding off the Lehigh Valley Clippers, the Dodgers, and the Lafayette Ambassador Falcons. And Jim, as uh, the league itself, I have it calculated that this is season number 62 as you look at the first pitch to number 10, Jesse Borden. Jess, as we mentioned earlier, the long ball game. So Jim, 62 seasons. Oh, uh, that's, you know, Blue just a credit to a lot of people during those 62 seasons. And, you know, it takes a lot of people to make this thing work. And we talked about, you know, President Eric Charles and Vice President Tim George, Tom George, excuse me, Secretary Treasury. We talked about already Tim Fisher and Director of Marketing and the Media Guide Editor David Sheriff have done a great job. Those are the people who are running the league right now. But you talk about, you know, the people who have been here for years and years and years and, you know, done all kinds of work for the league. I'll tell you what, Jim, you look at the uh, right now with the Royals uh, with only two losses. The fewest losses ever, ever. Now, I did my research in this. As you get a look at the bat to clean up me and Omar Torres, he fouls it back. Fewest losses ever for a league champion. Take a guess. Now, you're looking at, you're looking at close to 45 games. You, I'm going to guess. 40 games, 30, mid-30s. I'm going to guess five. Five? Do you know I have that statistic that uh, there's been only... Torres fouls that ball off his foot. I'd say somewhere between five and seven. Okay, we're, we're, we're staying live with that, Jim. Uh, but I'll share with you that the fewest losses were three. Not only get a look at the Take a look step. how he really cranks his foot up, and then look at how far his back leg is down, almost at a 45-degree angle, and that time it catches him. And that, that leg was exposed, the, the bone of his foot, and he will know that tomorrow but he's a player he's a clean up man so you just get back in there since 1977 1977 in this league there's been two teams with five or less losses as league champions two hellertown's one of them 2006 whiz you got it i'm sorry 2005 five, i was gonna say 29 not, and three not last year but the year before because that's why they're talking about how this start for Hellertown with such a great start this year, but the fact that uh, they only ended up losing that number of games a couple of years ago really didn't surprise anybody that, that Hellertown could get off to that start. And see that, look at that bender. Severi really getting his control. Nice footwork there on shortstop Mike Dickey and in time to put the, uh, for the put out, Tim Ray. Here's another one for you. 
As we look at the plate, Brandon Nardella, Brandon bats in the fifth spot. Brandon hit a double his last at bat and also scored. How about this one, Jim? With this league, with there's so much balance, how many times in, in the history of the league has there been a league champion with 10 or more losses? Now we're looking at 62 that's, that's, seasons. Not counting this one, so it's yeah, 61. That's a tough, tough question. Yeah, with 10 to... or more losses. Yes, league champion. That's 10 or less, left I should center say. Gap. That's less. being chased down. That might fall. It does. Without breaking pace, Nardella goes to second for the stand-up double. Second double of the night for Nardella. That was right in the gap between left and center. It was rolled back there. It's a good contact by the five-spot hitter. Yeah, take a look at Nardella with the good swing there. Puts it right in that gap. There you see a beautiful shot of that Lehigh University outfield. Manager Eric Schmidt back to the plate, and he had to double his last at bat. The bender off Severi gets him ahead, 0-1. I'll, I'll answer this at the... Uh, you can see right there in that space between left and center. And you couldn't put the ball any better. Outside the reach of both runners was showing that speed. One of the things they have shading towards left or right center is Herkel. The sidearm throw in time and the finish of the play. So they send up four and they only get three outs. No runs as the Creekers are held scoreless once again. John Walson knew he was onto something back in 1948. He built an antenna on a hill that ran cable down into town. Thanks to pioneers like John Walson, cable television was born. Today, millions of people use cable in ways that John Walson never dreamed of. Cable brings the internet to homes, schools, and businesses 50 to 100 times faster than a phone line. Cable offers more high-quality educational and children's programming than anyone. In all, cable is investing $11 billion a year advancing technology, bringing you better service and better programming. In fact, cable is spending $6 billion a year on award-winning programs. John Walson could never have predicted where cable would lead, but if he were around today, he'd probably like where cable is going. Cable TV, wired to the future. We've played uh, two and a half innings. Martins Creek started the game off with three. Hasn't been a whole lot of action since. They've had one sit hit since the first inning. Beth Leon, their last uh, at bat, got a runner on base. Now they're going to be sent up batters 7, 8, and 9 as the pickoff move from Driscoll over to first base. Caught the base runner to end up just seeing three. So right now Driscoll's only faced six batters in two innings. And coming to the plate will be Sean Brown, the left fielder. Jim, you know, the, uh, in the history, 15 teams, 15 teams have won, have won the league championship with at least 10 losses. Wow. I was just looking at the book with the 2005 team led by Bob Zierfoss. The closest team to them at the end of the year was nine games behind. Nine behind. Huh. That was a pretty dominating year. Okay, Sean Brown with his first ad bat in the seventh spot. Batter number seven of the inning for Driscoll, or the game. And Brown rips that towards right center, but with a beeline on it. And closing that out, Nardella with his second put out of the game. You take a look at Sean Brown. Nardella is just very, very agile out there in center field. He likes to chase them down. You can see he's content. He just got done running bases. Now he'll just come back and chase fly balls. Nardella two for two in the game offensively. Coming up to the plate in the eighth spot, Ron Konopelski, the right fielder. Started the game off with a fly ball to right. And rips it to short. Good position and the finish play on the defense of Jim Borton. His second assist of the game and Kevin Walbert's third put out over at first on the one pitch, six to three. It's going to bring up Josh Harrickle. We talked about him earlier. 
Yeah. Here we're going to take a look at that line shot. That short, good job by Tim Borton. And Walbert with the stretch to close it off. First pitch to Herkel, the center fielder for a strike. And just coming back to this history, Jim. Now, some of these uh, organizations are now defunct. There's a rip to short. Off the glove. Can he recover in time? The long throw. Not in time. And a stretch by Walbert. A good effort by Jim Borton as he knocked it down. But the speed of Herkel beats out the throw. Off the hot shot to shortstop. Well, Borton did a nice job of just getting himself in position to try to get that out there. Just probably lost it by a step. That's going to bring the top of the order. Nick DiMico come back. As you see, the shot rips it out to short. Borton tries to knock it down, recovers on the throw, the long throw from the grass, and just gets there in time. Great stretch there by Kevin Walbert on her angle from up above. Tough throw there from the edge of the grass. Good stretch, as you said, at first base by Walbert. D'Amico grounded out the short, his first at bat, and you know the base running of Herrickel with the respect for Driscoll and the last time the base run was picked off. They're sending Herrickel to throw. Short hops to the bag, so... Uh, now in scoring position, Josh Harkel on a stolen base. The throw off Eric Schmidt. Quick hop in front. You see a good look here on the takeoff. Well, what really helped him on that pitch was that pitch was a little bit down and it forced the catcher to come up. Eric Schmidt forced to come up a little bit tougher than usual to get that throw down the second. And you know, as a base runner, you know the pattern of the pitcher. If they're going to throw that second pitch a bender, you know that's going to give you more time to the bases. D'Amico pops it up towards the right side and closing off Joe Bubba for his first put out of the game, but more so going to retire the side with four up to the plate and three. these ads for satellite TV, they make it sound like such a great deal. Well, here's the real deal. First, you gotta sign this annual contract. Ouch. Then, there's service and installation. And if there's ever a problem, guess who's responsible? And here's the kicker. A separate receiver for each television in the house? That could cost several hundred dollars more. Satellite TV? I don't think so. I'll keep my cable. Barnes Creek still holding on to that three-run advantage. Bethion with their second hit of the ball game. One error so far. Coming up to start the fourth is Jim Happel. Jim's first at bat. He struck out. You know that he wants to make a difference. On the mound, continually at starting, and ever since that first inning, has done a pretty productive job was C.J. Severi. Well, he's first. really gotten his curveball to work, Mike, and that's the key, I think, that... Uh, Martins Creek knows it's coming, but they can't really jump on it as well as they did in that first inning, and he's gotten that curve to work a little bit better. Outside, making the count. One on one. Happel um, bats seventh in a low rotation. Severi, since that first inning, has only faced eight batters. That ball is going to fall fair. And that's going to continue the defense. Hop going for two. The throw. And he cut the second. So Happel with the leadoff double rectifies that first inning strikeout. In the A spot, Kevin Walbert. Kevin grounded back to the mound, his first at bat. And Jim, I had the chance to look through this this morning. I was uh, with Georgie Joseph, my mother in law, buying a car, and I was talking to this gentleman. His name is uh, Fran Alberelli. 
and Fran Alberelli played for the Nazareth Phillies. Wow. You know, the Nazareth Phillies won the league in 1963. I'm looking at some of these names, the Portland Apollos. How about that one? <laughs> the, more importantly about the Portland Apollos, they were the first league champion that no one can take away. They won three in a row. In that first year, one of the best records in the history of Blue Mountain League, 27-5. and five. 